In this video, I'm going to show you how to send emails from Node-RED. There's lots of different forms of communication these days, but emails are still very popular. I'm going to show you how to use a Google account to send the emails from Node-RED, but you can also use other account types, and it's a similar process. I'm also going to create a new Google account and use that to send the emails. You could choose to use your own email account, but I would recommend having it separate just for security purposes because you need to create an app password which makes your account slightly less secure just because there's more routes in. So let's make a start and make a new Google account. The first thing we're going to do is go to google.com forward slash account forward slash about and then click on create an account. Here it gives you the option to either use your own email address or to create a new Gmail account. I'm going to create a new Gmail account. Now let's click next. On this screen you don't have to enter your mobile phone number but you do have to enter your date of birth and your gender. It then just asks you some personalization settings which select whatever you prefer. Now you've done that you're into your new Google account. We need to set up multi-factor authentication so that we can then create an app password. So let's do that. Go to security and then go to two-step verification and we need to turn that on. If you don't see the option to create an app password once you set up MFA, then don't worry, I'll show you the link above so that you can go straight to it. So once you've logged in, you've got this app password section and then you can create a new app. So let's go to create a new app, other custom name, I'm going to call it Node-RED. And then it comes up with your app password. So make sure you store this somewhere safe because you'll need this later. So now, as you can see, you've got a new app password which you can use to log into your new Google account. Now let's jump over to Node-RED and do the necessary setup there. The first thing we need to do is install a new palette. So let's go up to the hamburger menu, manage palette, install, and then we're going to search for this, Node-RED, Node email. So you can see there's two here, but it's the top one we want, which was actually updated two days ago. As you can see here, I've already got it installed. So we should see that the node is on the left. So let's type in email. So as you can see here, there's the ability to send emails and also to receive emails. So we're going to send a test email. So let's drag this onto here. And then we're going to want an inject node so that we can trigger it. So let's type that and drag this on. And now we need to do the email configuration. So let's double click in here. And then you can see at the moment, it's got this SMTP server and these port settings, but you need to put in your credentials. So what we need to put in here is, is the email address. And then for the password, we need to put in the app password that we created previously. So let's do that and then see if it works. Okay, I've now entered the settings. What we need to do now is, is we need to pass in a payload so that it actually sends an email with a message. So if we click on this node, and then we go to this notebook up here, it will show us what we need to do. So as you can see here, message.payload is the email message, and then message.topic is the subject of the email. So let's pass those details in and see if it works. So now let me quickly walk you through what I've done. So if we go into the inject node, you can see we've got message.payload, and I've put this is, this is a test, this is what's going to appear as the text in the email, and then message.topic, and we've got test subject here. And then in here, we've got the settings that I showed you earlier that I've set up, which is already pre-populated really, apart from the username and password. And then we just link the two nodes together, deploy it, and then we press this button. And now if we go to Gmail, you can see we've already received the email because I've sent it to myself. So we've got test subject, and then if we go into it, we've got this is a test. Now let's actually go back to Node-RED and do a more useful example. So a more useful example will be using sensor information and sending your email when some sensors change. So let's do that. So I'm going to do it so that when the house alarm gets disarmed, then it sends us an email. The first thing we want to do is find a state node. So let's go here to Home Assistant node. If we drag this one on, then we can check when a Home Assistant entity changes, it will trigger a message in here. So let's double click and now search for the entity. So in this case, I've got the house alarm here. 
So when the house alarm gets disarmed, we want it to trigger a message in Node Red. So let's just name this node. Now the next step is, is that we want to have certain text to be sent within the email. So there's a few ways we could do this. I'm going to do a really basic way. And if we scroll down, and if we actually go to the change node, it allows you to change what's in a message. So we'll drag this onto here, and then we'll link this up, and then double click. And you can see in here, you can set message.payload or anything else in the message. So if we click add here, and then we can change this to message.topic, which is the subject of the email. And then we can put the value in here. So And then in here, we can put in some information about when it was disarmed. So this will be the text within the email itself. So for now, I'm just going to put some sample text, but then later I'll show you how to make this a bit more dynamic. We can now copy and paste this email node from above, as all the details are the same. Link that up, and then let's deploy that. So now we need to go into Home Assistant and we need to arm and then disarm the alarm because it's already disarmed. So let's go here. Now that the alarm is armed, let's disarm it and see if it triggers an email. We can see here that the email send has failed. So if we double click into here, you can see there's no credentials. So annoyingly, every time you copy this node, it loses the credentials. So for now, what we're going to do instead is we're going to delete this and we're going to link it up to the one we created above. You can link multiple nodes to other nodes. Let's deploy this again. Now let's arm and disarm the alarm again. Now let's disarm it and see if it works this time. Okay, so we haven't had any errors here. So let's check the inbox. And yes, we've got an email here, house alarm disarmed. We're now going to add a debug node so that we can see what data is being sent from this entity. So let's search for that. Add debug here. For now I'm going to disconnect it sending an email because we don't care about that. Let's double click into the debug node and change this to complete message so we can see all the information. Deploy it again. And now we need to just quickly arm and disarm it again to see what information it returns. Here we go, so on the right hand side you can see the payload. So we've got disarmed as the payload and then we've got additional data in here. So we've got the entity name, we've got the old and the new state. So what we could do here is we could either take some information like when it was changed and include that in the email, or we've got a user ID here. So if we know this user ID, then we know who disarmed the alarm. So I'm going to assume that this user ID is me. So if we click here, then we get the path of where this information is within the message. So we can use that in a minute. Now let's open up this change node again. And instead of having this as the text, we are going to change this to an expression and then click these three dots. And now we're going to add the following. As you can see here, I've now included the user ID. Ideally, it would be the name instead, but that's not available by default, so we'll just do this for now. So now you can see that the user ID has been included in the email. Of course, this is just an example, and you could use lots of other different sensors that have got different information available to you, which you could then include in your emails. Well, now you've created another way to bombard yourself with notifications, I'll be really interested to know what ideas you come up with, so please leave them in the comments down below. That's it for today, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and liking the video, as it really helps my channel grow. So thanks, until next time.